Hello and welcome to Classically Urban Podcast. Uh, this week we got a couple of hot topics coming your way. This is Henry and Gripos, resident streamer. Catch me Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays at 8 o'clock or whenever I feel like it on the weekend. Joined by Mr. OG, that guy. OG Philly G. <laughs> it's your boy, baby Ice Cube. I'm George. Guys, I'm not doing the computer stuff this week. <laughs> I know. It's weird. <laughs> Is that why our stream or podcasts have been coming up properly recently? Ha 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 ha! No, uh. get out of here. You're garbage. Um. So, the big thing that we're going to talk about this week is probably you know, it's in the news a lot. You guys don't watch news related to sports, even though this is rarely related to sports, but it's fine. Um. Good old Colin Kaepernick has made the news again for being a quote unquote black activist. Mm-hmm. Um, basically, um, I've made you guys watch. Well, I didn't. Well, yeah, I made you guys. I made you guys watch the commercial that he did with Nike called "Dream Crazy." Um, and in the commercial, it's just him. It's essentially giving a motivational speech to people who um, are either have some form of disability, whether it be physical, mental, or whatever. Um, people who are just different, who just don't fit into the status quo of society. Um, people of different races, just anything. Um, and he just, you know, basically was saying, just go for what, whatever your dream is, just go for it. Go for a hundred percent, do what you need to do, make the sacrifice and just go do what you need to do to be successful. Right. I like it. Right. It's good. It's a good message to send to people. You know, don't mm. be afraid of what society is telling you to do or to not to do. Just go fucking. It do was it. like, don't let other people's expectations determine what you can accomplish. Don't let your dreams be dreams. See, yes, for the sake of memeing. I don't really care meme. about like the whole Kaepernick thing. It just doesn't bother me at all. But I think the greatest thing to come out of it was all the memes. Oh, oh yes. My God. Like, oh my God. Bobby Boucher. Yeah. Stop, the water boy. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Believe in something, even if Mama says it's the devil. Y'all, did you see the Mike Tyson one? <laughs> yeah. That one. No. Oh, I was dead. They put the lisp in the words. Oh God, did it's they? It's so great, man. It's so great. I saw one with old Greg. It was tremendous. George. I can't remember it. I yeah. it. Believe in something, oh, even God. if it means sacrificing everything. <laughs> Oh, uh, it it's so good. You probably know who that is, Caleb, or er, Brandon. Yeah. Shoot the ball even if you're not open. Oh, my God. It's a picture of Kobe Bryant. <laughs> um, But we can all agree, that's a good message for a company to send its demographic yeah. of 35 and younger, you know, yeah. people who will still have a chance to achieve their dreams. And a company like whose motto has been just do it for a very long for time. For years, right? Yeah. Um, And the cool thing about this that people don't understand is that Nike has contracts with almost every major sport in the world, especially the NFL. Nike (coughs) does all of their jerseys, does all their pants, their socks, does everything. And who did they just sign a contract with? The The one person that the NFL cannot stand. Like, do you know? That's that's a bold move. That's genius. Because essentially they get all this money from the people who hate Kaepernick but they also get all the money from the people who love him. Yeah. That's an, that's just genius genius move. <laughs> what are you showing me now? Believe in something, even if it means cutting your dick off. Oh, that's a picture of <laughs> Caitlyn <laughs> Jenner. Yep. That's my favorite one right just there. Screw it. <laughs> it's just, just screw it. It's just screw it. Jesus Christ. <laughs> but just the like the business savviness of that. Like that CEO was a genius. Yeah. Like I don't care what you say. That was a smart move. Now there's plenty of people out there that would say otherwise, though. But, how, like, I don't understand how. Like, how is that a bad idea? You're getting money from both places. Those contracts are locked in. Those companies cannot break that contract. And Kaepernick can't break it either. They're going to be getting money from yeah. them for years. And there's Nike, nothing that anyone can do about it. Nike has you nuts and a vice. Exactly. Balls in your court, NFL. <coughs> but their hand is also yeah. in your court with your ball. Yeah. <laughs> That's fair. But, I mean, they're pretty much set. You know what I mean? That's... And then some people have gone as far as to say, like, they did this because Kanye West is signed to Adidas. Who does Kanye West support? Trump. Donald Trump. Yeah. Who's a demographic that goes for Nike, 35 and under, who are, majority of them are liberals. 
So they're like, we're going to go opposite of Adidas. Exactly. Yeah. You're making Adidas look super bad. Exactly. Oh. This works on so many levels. Power play. It's ridiculous. Oh. Um, and night at Adidas recently passed Jordan for like, like they passed them in like sales and value and like worth and things like that. Like the Jordan brand. So Adidas is growing and they're right next, they're getting up there next to Nike and Nike just made this huge power play, which we don't know how it's going to turn out, but you know. Um, the new balance takes up the rear. Oh my God. <laughs> up. Um, but besides all the business stuff, there's a huge social impact and like societal impact to this, which I think is hilarious because one, a bunch of people who do not like Kaepernick started destroying their Nike merch that they owned, that they already purchased from Nike. People were cutting up their socks, lighting their shirts on fire. I don't get how you can uh, dislike a guy so much you'd waste money for him. Because you don't stand up when song plays, Caleb. Like, do you realize, like, my thing was, like, y'all realize they have your money already. <laughs> yeah. Like, they don't care what you do with it after you've paid for it. Yeah. Like, I don't understand why that's a thing. People are fucking goofy, man. They need something to lash out at. And if it's apparently socks, then fuck socks. I was saying, like, you could have easily just, like, you could have been, like, a real OG and just gone and stole their shit and then burned it. Yeah. Because then they'd still be paying for it. But then you'd go to jail for stealing. Yeah. It's generally frowned upon. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> so... That started happening, and then the meat of this, which I want to get to, which I want to get to your guys' opinion on, some meat. funny, mm -hmm. is there was a huge backlash from the military. Hmm? Because they're like, I love Nike. Nope. But now I hate Nike. Because what was the whole th reason people were angry at Kaepernick for about kneeling He's for kneeling the flag? The Disrespecting uh, the troops. Exactly. And now... They're seeing Nike, who everyone loves, support someone who doesn't su who they believe doesn't support them, and the troops are pissed. Not all of them, obviously, but I'm saying like enough to talk about exactly. Like people are angry. People have been angry, and they're boy like some people are trying to like a lot of troops are trying to boycott Nike, saying that they're disrespectful to troops themselves, and all these other things. And the one person that I hate the most at this point in my life mm -hmm. is. I think her name is Taya. Taya Kyle. Oh, I thought you were going to say... Uh, Tommy Lerner. That neutrality guy. No. Taya oh, Kyle yeah. is the wife of the American sniper. Oh, her. One of the greatest American heroes in our country. Where's right? the priest kid, Kyle? He's a great man. Did a lot for our country. Wow, that was horrible. Oh, <laughs> shit. I wonder if they heard that. We just died, bro. Bro, do you not turn your volume off? No, that was just the update thing. I and mean, if you turned his volume off, we wouldn't be able to hear her. Anything. Oh. Breath was. Oh, Phil. What is going on with you over there? What, my computer? Yeah, yeah. yeah the notification was like. Oh, uh, it was. Hey, your OneDrive is full. Good job. I need a OneDrive. Um, I'm trying to figure out how to turn it off, and it's irritating the shit out of me. Because <laughs> I, I can't figure out how to turn off OneDrive. Uh, uh, anyway, Taya, Taya Kyle. <laughs> American Sniper's wife. Yep. Who, her name on Facebook is Taya Kyle. American wife. Already hate her. Already mm -hmm. can't stand her. The perp and the thing she said about Nike and Kaepernick make her so much worse. Now, I'm not going to read the whole thing because it's super freaking long. Are you going to cherry pick the parts that make her look bad? Well, the joking. whole thing makes her look I'm stupid. Joking. I'm joking. I mean, I can read the whole thing if you really want me to. No. Um, so, uh, the first sentence kind of, uh, the first couple of the lines basically sum up what her whole thing is about. It says, Nike, I love your gear, but you exhaust my spirit on this one. Your new ad with Colin Kaepernick, I get the message, but that sacrificing everything thing, it just doesn't play out here. Sacrificing what exactly? A career? I've done that both times. I chose to stay home and be with my kids instead of continuing my business climb. And it wasn't sacrificing everything. It was sacrificing one career and some money, and it was because of what I believe in, and more importantly, who I believe in. First of all. Isn't that what exactly what Kaepernick did? No shit. What the fuck is wrong with her? But her whole thing was the troops are the people who really sacrifice. And I'm like, when in the fuck did this commercial ever bring up the troops? No one said nothing about the troops until you people just jumped in there and started arguing about something that had nothing to do with you. At all. Like, you are angry about something that doesn't even affect you. 
Well, how about this? We know what they're mad about, shall we say? No, I don't even Black Man's not sitting up in the air. Oh my god. Well, yeah, no, I understand, but that. I mean, like, and it just so happens that you can put it on the troops and things like that. And she goes on to bring. Um, she says that. Um, I'm also thinking the irony in your commercial is that while I am not privy to the numbers, it's likely he gained a lucrative Nike contract. So yeah, the whole sacrificing thing is insulting to those who really have sacrificed everything. This is why I hate this woman. So we can only listen to Kaepernick if he's a homeless person. That. Well, I just don't like the uh, whole thing where you can't do a good deed without people lingering on that one thing that they didn't agree with. Like, this has nothing to do with him kneeling during the national anthem. Nothing at all. In fact, the only way that you could tie it back is that he said that he sacrificed a lot, which he did, and doing something that he thought was right, which is what the moral of the commercial is. Do things that you believe in. Despite what other people yeah. think of you, the not, only thing you yeah hey fuck our troops I'm gonna sit during the anthem like it had yeah. nothing to do with that. If you're mad about this commercial, you're strictly mad about motivation. That's the only thing I can say. Like <coughs> it was just a nice hey do what you can do. So the biggest thing so like I I'm not saying I agree with it, mm-hmm. but like don't don't do this to me Phil. No Please. no I like what? it I like no, it. no, no. we can just like, be a sound room of. My thing is, okay, yes, he's saying he sacrificed everything by destroying a chance at a career in the NFL, losing however however much money he was going to make, or was making, but this Nike deal, he's still going to be making $5 million a year for five years. That's what his contract is. Yeah. I don't really think it's right for a person... <clears throat> to speak in that manner when they actually haven't given up everything. I mean, football he gave was up his a good passion though. It was he his passion up. and there's still ways he can continue in that. No, he can't. No, he can't ever play. Because well, no, I'm not saying he can play, but no, the but NFL there, won't let him back in the NFL at all. That's what I I'm not saying that. Like if football is really his passion, there's things he can do to stay in the game, not as a player. Oh, okay, I see that. But like but like coach a high school okay, I see or a college like Probably college wouldn't work just because of the ties with the yeah, NFL. But, like, a high school, reach out to kids on a lower level. Like, when I mean lower level, I mean, like, closer to the source of issues. Yeah. And, like, push things that way. But he's kind of gotten to the point where he's a whole – um I'm trying to find the right word for it. But he's become more of, like – it's it's more of like a celebrity movement than it actually is like a purposeful movement at this point. It's kind of become a cult following. Almost. Yeah, it's. I wouldn't say that because like to the public eye it is, but Kaepernick does a lot of work. Yeah. In order to get because his whole thing is police brutality. It has nothing to do. Yeah. With the troops, it has nothing to do with football. It has nothing to do with anything else except for police brutality. That's the only thing he's trying to fix right now, which is fine. You're allowed to f- go and fight whatever cause you need to fight. Yeah. But people are, like, to the public eye, that all they see is, oh, there's a black man not saying for the flag. Yeah. That disrespects the troops. Well, see, he's I'm da, trying da, 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 to da. look past that yeah. and, like, kind of get closer to the point he's trying to drive home and actually look at that more exclusively than, like, the entire topic is abroad. You can't. Like, no. They're it's really, hard. Yeah, it's hard. Yeah. To yeah. Do. Especially because he doesn't do he doesn't do what he does in the public eye. Yeah, like he doesn't care if cameras are there watching him every time he goes talks to people or donates money to something or goes to like a community and tries to work things out. Like he, no one sees it because he doesn't care. He yeah. doesn't care if anybody sees it. He just knows in his heart that he's doing the right thing. Yeah, and it's hard for the public to understand that side of him because the pub the court of public opinion has already dogged him as this radical black man who won't stand for the flag that he, this nation, you know, so is, I guess. There is one thing I wanted to say about the whole sacrifice thing. People say he didn't sacrifice anything. He didn't know that Nike deal was coming through when he took that, uh, he kneeled for the anthem, no. but he kept doing it because he believed in yeah. it. So that was a form of sacrifice. Not s- the I other thing I hate about it with this Taya Kyle chick real quick, she's getting mad. She just basically was like, you didn't sacrifice anything because you're now you're getting paid by Nike. I'm like, bitch, your name on Facebook. Fucking Facebook is the American wife. 
Are you telling you trying to tell us that you haven't profited off of your husband being the fucking American sniper? Fuck out of here. See, okay, that's kind of one comparison I want to make. So, all these people who are in the public eye and are making a shit ton of money all talk about doing all this good. Do you realize how much more they could do if they took a less like um a lo- a less lavish paycheck and put all that excessive money that they don't actually need to use like That's senators true. and house uh, representatives senators representatives professional football players all like all professional sports musicians I wouldn't say all cuz WNBA don't make a lot of money <laughs> But no, 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 no. You, you know where I'm getting yeah, at. Yeah, like, I'm just saying. I don't know. <laughs> it's one of those things like all these people want to do all this good, and they're all putting away like millions upon millions a year. If they were to like actually go put that towards a good cause, it would actually make a good difference. It would make a big difference. Like our boy But LeBron the problem James. is people are so greedy and they want that money. Well, they don't want to give it all away. The only well, thing you need to keep some money to be able to sustain yourself. And that's, then but that's what I'm saying. But – if he doesn't have that kind of money, he won't be able to continue putting himself on that kind of a platform. Exactly. Like, if he were to, say, give away all of it and then live like we do. I'm sure. not saying live like we do. Well, like, still have, like, a, substan- a substantial amount of money, but he doesn't need... Like, he's but, getting $5 million a year. Yeah. He could afford to live off of, like, one or two. But he's never shared his living expenses, like, what he puts his money towards. Like, we don't know what all of his donations are going to if he has any Yeah, funds. I know. Well, I'm... I'm working that in there but i'm guaranteeing you he's not giving away 80 percent. lebron has three like four (laughs) houses across the u.s he's got hundreds of millions of dollars that's a known fact but the only what did he build school yeah he did the only thing i would say is we all four of us sitting down here and cody even though he's not here would agree that this country is only run off of money that is it money is the only thing that matters in this country and the only way you get to do the things that these rich people do is by having a surplus of money right but they need to keep that surplus of money. Their job is not guaranteed. Yeah, Kaepernick, as a football player, Kaepernick could have got hit in the head one time. His career could have been done. Their contracts aren't guaranteed. He would have never got paid again. Yeah. So, they're like football. I mean, basketball and baseball and soccer. You can kind of say you guys get guaranteed money. You could give a little bit more. That's true. But at the same time, they don't have any influence without that money. So they need to keep a lot of it in order to keep that influence. See, but the argument against that would be if they were using that money to do good and they were doing enough good with what they were doing, their influence would still be there. I think that philanthropy is like 40% having money and 60% how knowing how to spend it. Yeah. Like if you're being frugal with that money, you're going to be able to make it go a lot longer, yeah. do a lot more with it than just spending it all for other people in one go. Well, I'm That's not saying do it in one go, but well, like... I know, but I'm just saying... You're just saying use more of it to do more yeah. work. But the other thing I would say to that is like a lot of times, like the people who really do do a lot for the community, you don't ever know it. Yeah. Like you would never know it unless you're in that community. Like the only reason LeBron like got so publicized for opening schools because he's opening a fucking school. In like, a bad neighborhood. Right? Yeah. Like yeah. that's that's a big deal. Like you can't just open the school under the rug you know what i mean that's like a, that's a huge thing but like surprise education. They all, but like these people they go through communities and whether you're an athlete or an actor whatever the what you go to communities and sometimes you don't have to give money to yeah. influence people they go talk to people they donate to boys and girls clubs mm-hmm. and things like that and they all they all have their own charities and things like that whether those charities are legitimate yeah. or not we've discussed that and it's you know remained to be seen but you know these people do a lot that we don't know about yeah so Because it's kind of, it's, it touches on a similar topic that we've just been discussing, but like everything we've basically talked about, where has it stemmed back to? What do you mean? The inner city, the schooling, the lack of money. I thought we were talking talking about the We We are. It's It's, it's still on like that level, but it's just kind of off to the side a little bit. The Kaepernick thing brings in a lot of different things about society. So... How many people are on each NFL team? A lot. Like, but what's like their actual roster? Like fifty something people? Uh, I think sixty. Sixty. Yeah, and then you have all the practice squads that get yeah. paid six figures too. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, 
Six figures. Okay, that's not it. Boy. Yeah. See? Um, Look, it happened again. It's Lost your train of thought, didn't you? No, I was going to say something, but I don't know if they listen or not. So, um, Wait, what? That's what my notification was just now. Yeah. yeah I'll, I'll, I'll. Okay. But, like, okay, so there's 60 people on a team. Well, on an official roster yeah, for the yeah, games. Yeah, yeah. Assuming what they all make, probably they all probably make at least six figures. But like, how high up there? Like, oh, I have no idea. Just yeah, because. But I know like a majority of them are pretty well. But paid. the any I wouldn't use the NFL just because their money's not guaranteed. I know, but I'm just using them because I know there's a lot of players. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and how many teams are there? There's like thirty. Thirty. I think so. Thirty or thirty-two. So that's. 30 times 60 or 60 times 30 that's like 180 yeah no <laughs> it's like 1,800 yeah sorry quick maths so if each team could come up with a way to like donate 4 or 5 million dollars that's a like that's damn near uh, stupid quick math because I can't fucking count but it's 120 million yeah roughly they give if they all give up four, yeah, it's hundred twenty yeah. somewhere around there. Yeah, so that's a lot of money that could be go that could go to fixing the schools, increasing the education that these kids can get, uh, improving the bottom line. You know who and the gets quality all, You of know life. who makes yeah. all that money though. I don't yeah. think it should be the NFL's responsibility. I'm, I'm no, not no, saying no, it should no, be no, the yeah, NFL. No, I'm just no, I'm just saying hypo- like, hypothetical. I don't think it should be these. Um, uh, outside entity's responsibility to fix our society. It that should be more be. of a government thing, which is but, what I was getting at. But we, our government has never done that. That's the problem. I don't think that's an excuse. No, no, no. I'm, I'm, I know, but I'm saying, like, but we, that, we can't expect them to do something out of the middle of nowhere. But it kind of all comes back to the point that we've talked about before is how we're at the point where our government is broken. They're not going to – we can't do anything to fix it, so we need to figure out – how to fix our society and everything going on in our own way because we can't rely on the government to do its job. Jay-Z. No, it's, I feel like relying on, like... Jay-Z, you said it best. Yeah. What saying? What? Government? Fuck government. We politic ourselves. Yeah. yeah. So, I'm just using the NFL as an example because yeah. we are on the topic. Yeah. But, like... Uh, it could be, like... There's uh, enough people Elon out there Musk who make enough money. Well... Like, even us, like... Hold we, on. Wait there's stuff we could do. There's a statistic that I learned the other day. Okay. So you guys know what the Gilded Age is, right? Yeah. I assume was, you do. Yeah. 19, what, 20s, 30s? No. Yeah. It was 18. Was it 18? Yeah, summer. It was a long time ago. It was around the time you, labor unions first started. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. So it was 18... It's like late 1800s. 80s, 1880s probably? Yeah, probably around so, the time. Know. It's summer, 1880s or 90s. The Gilded Age was um, called the Gilded Age because the, to the outside world, America was lavish. It was rich. It had a lot of money. But you look on the inside, it's just shithole. Right? Because Gilded is just something that's painted gold. So nothing's changed. In yeah. that time period, <coughs> ten per- the top 10% of the, co- of the country had 73% of the country's wealth. Mm-hmm. That's the highest it's ever been in the history of the world. In any country. Yeah. Guess where it's at right now? Higher? The exact same. Oh. Yeah. And well, that, that was termed the Gilded Age because it was a shithole that just looked super nice. Do you, do you know about Pareto? Yeah, yeah. Do you know about Pareto distribution? What did you do? Pareto say? distribution? No, it's a mathematical that. principle that if you have that twenty percent of the people will always end up with eighty percent of the resources. Yeah. Just because that's how things play out with people, you know, like some people are harder working, some people are smarter, shit like that. So, might not be the best. Argument per se. So it's just th- it's just life. That's George, the reason sometimes why it can. Do you know how like different? That. Like when you're talking about statistics, ten percent and twenty percent are no, no, very, I, I very know, different. Just pointing that out, I'm not disproving your. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. I hear what you're saying, but I'm just saying that's half of what it's supposed to be. Yeah, no. that's just, that's that's bad. That's not good. That's an F. No, it's not good. That's an F. That is <laughs> failing. <laughs> no. But that, like, I'm just saying that because to show that, like, there's only ten percent of this society who has the money to change our society. And let's say, I'll say 2% of that are athletes who actually care. Yeah. The other 8% are the people who are the athletes' bosses. And they didn't get that to that level of money by uh, spending all their money. Exactly, and they don't give a fuck about us. 
They don't. Like, that's why Trump is the way he is now. He doesn't care about us. Yep. He pretends to to get his job, to fulfill his job requirements, but he could give less of a fuck about us. Like, he truly could. So the only way the society is going to change is if that 10% decides it's going to change. And or a violent revu- revolution. Chill. <laughs> and that's why it is important for athletes and not the government or government entities to make the change because that's where all the money is going to come from. Yeah. Those are the only people who care about what happened to the inner cities. Well, okay, so because it is sports-related, me and my coworkers were discussing today that we were talking about, like, better salary caps. Yeah. Because, like, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the NBA has salary caps, right? Yes. And MLB... The, the, players, the players don't, but the teams do. The teams do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the teams only have so much to yes, spend. Yes, so yes, it's yes, the yes. same way in the... Uh, it's the same way with MLB, but I think there's a slightly skewed a little bit more. Yeah, MLB, they're all different, but they yeah. all do the exact same thing, essentially. Because I know, like, some teams in the MLB have, like, a lot more money. Oh, yeah, it's the same way in the NBA. Good. Yeah, it's the okay. same way in the NBA. Yeah, yeah. That's where you get into, like, big markets and small markets and then yeah. average markets. Like, Indiana is, a, is I want to say we're classified as a small market, um, so we don't have as much money. Whereas the Lakers, who just got LeBron, it's a huge market, and they have enough money to pay LeBron. Yeah. So. Well, it's kind of like, I think it's the White Sox. Like, they pay their pitcher, like, more than, like, the entire team has. That's the lowest rank. Yep. Which is just ridiculous. But, like, putting, like, it'd be interesting to see if they put, like, made everything a more even playing field. Like, kind of lower the salary caps. I mean, not all communism is terrible, Caleb. See, but when it comes to sports, it shouldn't be who can pay the most for the best players. It's pay to win, essentially. Yeah. Microtransactions. But if you you have, like, a really good athlete and another team wants to buy them off of you... They would have to sacrifice the rest of their players... To, to be able to afford that one athlete, afford that one athlete. That's that one athlete. and that's not going to put them in a good spot. Yeah, but I mean, that's, I mean, that's the how way it works now, though. Working, putting an effort goes. I mean, if you have a soldier that's worth ten men on the battlefield, then yeah, you're going to hold him in higher regard than like the other ten men that you have. They're just normal joes. A good, another good example of what I think, Phil, you're kind of talking about. Okay, maybe is, I'm, I'm struggling on like how to actually like. Yeah. Put it in fruition. um, The, like, soccer. Yeah. Biggest sport across the world, hands down, right? Football. Uh, Football, football, yes. Even though it sucks. Yeah, it does. Huh? I said even though it sucks. Oh, my God. Um, (laughs) So, a lot of people don't know how the finance... A lot of people in America don't know how the finances of soccer work and whatnot. But basically, it's just going to sound... This is going to sound super slavery-ish, but it's not, I promise. (laughs) A player who... Like, when you're a kid in the soccer world, like, say, let's take um, Messi, for instance, right? Everyone knows who Messi is, right? Like, the yeah. short little midget dude who's really good at soccer. Okay, yeah. I don't know what he looks like or his height. Yeah, and okay, all that's that, fine. But, but yeah, I know his you name. Know, you yeah. know the name, okay. He's from he's from Argentina. He grew up in Argentina. He learned to play soccer in Argentina at a school or a club in Argentina, right? Hmm. And he went up through the ranks and became part of the Argentinian national team and played across the globe, whatever the what. Every time another team buys out his contract or pays him a certain amount of money, he has to give that money back to the original club that he played for, that he started at. Mm. And that's, that's like a rudimentary way of thinking about it, but that's essentially what happens. So their contract, portions of it, automatically go to where they came from so that they can keep producing the soccer players that they need to to be able to – like fulfill the needs of FIBA and all these national teams. Yeah, that actually yeah. makes sense. The union right. does something similar. If you get trained by the IBEW and you go to work so, somewhere else within like a certain time period after you get receive that training, they're coming for their money because they, yeah. they paid for you to be that good. Yeah, but with like the with FIFA, it's or like I say FIFA, but like it's FIBA. I keep thinking of the fucking video game. Um, with FIBA, it is like or is it FIFA? I don't remember what it is. I don't give a shit. I don't know. But I know what you're talking um, about. It is the entire, like, every time a player's, like, a transaction involves a player, they get a portion of whatever, like, a certain percentage, no matter what the amount is, it's a certain percentage of it. So, 
I th- like I think that's kind of where your your mind is heading to the fact of like these players have this money, they can they can afford to give like ten percent of it back to where they came from. I'm not saying like they have to. Yeah, not but that they have to, but in theoretical practice, if they would put more than they already are because they can afford it, yeah, it would start a trend that would start things going in a better direction because. Like we said, the world runs on money. Money makes the world go round. The more money going back into the things we need fixed, the sooner things are actually going to start getting better. Yeah. I think that won't uh, putting money in things won't make shitty people less shitty. But no, that's true. The only other downside of this, I could see the argument is, is the whole welfare thing. Yeah. And like freeloaders, and you're that's never like going to get rid of that. It's a well, yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I'm not. That's what you're saying, but, like, I'm not talking about, like, on a personal level. I'm talking on, like, a community level. So, like, schools... The opportunity to be not... Give okay. them a better yeah, yeah, yeah. opportunity okay, okay. What to do better in life. And Basically get themselves what we're saying. to a point where then they can help give back. What Phil's saying is you're for, if you're an athlete, get on LeBron's level, build a fucking school, and then we'll talk about you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just because, like... Be worth a fuck. Damn it. I'm sure there's other... I am sure there are other athletes out there who could afford to do the same thing LeBron's doing. Um, Odell Beckham Jr. has become the highest paid athlete in the NFL ever. He makes like $160 million a year. It's and stupid. that's outrageous. What the fuck are you or doing no, he with became, that? He became the highest paid wide receiver in the NFL that there's ever been. What do you do with $160 million? Uh, you burn 85% of it, <laughs> and then you put the rest in the bank and spend it on like a Ferrari and a mansion. Jet ski with the spinning rims. But I think what we what also what needs to happen is, let, let's be real, athletes play a big deal into our culture, right? The way, yeah, like especially... Modern day gladiators. Yeah, especially yeah. for like, Caleb, I'm pulling you into this because you're the same color as me. Black athletes are super... Shut up. Black athletes are super important to the culture and to people like us because then it's like, well, not us now because we're grown, but like the idea that like kids can see someone who yeah, looks like them and they can still, they know, like, oh, I don't have to live in this shithole for the rest yeah. of my life. I'm going to be successful. Like, yeah. give people motivation. Yeah. Um, we need more people. Like, honestly, I think if the more, like, white people who are poor and disenfranchised, you need to hop on this black, like, this black activist train because we help you the same. Because your financial situation is the exact same as ours. You profit off of us Negroes. So you should just ride it. You know what I'm saying? Well, see, that's the other thing is, like, everybody keeps categorizing it into, like, race. But the majority of people... No, the majority of people are still racist. Like. Well, I'm, not, I'm not saying they're not racist, but okay, the yeah, majority of people all live in the same conditions. Because, yeah. again, if we look at how the wealth is distributed... There's 10%. It, it's <laughs> a very, very steep curve. Yeah. It's just a so the majority of the people live in very similar situations. Different flavored poor. Yeah. Exactly. You can have your uh, one has hot city, or you can have your trailer park. Look, one has hot links, the other has hot dogs. It's just the way the world works. You know what I mean, some people have pop, some people have soda. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that I, I, I really think it's important. Like, I know Caleb you said earlier, it's not the athlete's job, but I think it needs to be their job, whether they want to do it or not. It needs to be a part of their job to realize. Well, how much power they really have, and how many people actually like look up to them, exactly. and like how much influence and change they could actually create if they really wanted to. The right Kaepernick's kind of bringing it out and kind of showing that like they can make a difference, but he's just the first one, and he was never really like an elite athlete. He was. Shit, he took a team to the Super Bowl. I don't even know what position he played. So. Are you kidding? He was quarterback. Was Even really? Caleb knows that. It's all right. <laughs> See, I, 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 I okay. <laughs> it got to a point where like sports just became yeah, the, pointless the NFL to me. Is boring to me. Yeah. The NFL is so boring to me. Yeah, I watch the Super Bowl. But it's like even normal yeah. TV shows. You get for a half hour, you get like fifteen to sixteen minutes of actual show. Yeah, yeah. that's why. It's, that's why this it's over this internet thing. It's great. It's tremendous. It's fantastic. And I know a lot of what I was saying, Caleb, sounded like. A twisted form of socialism Marxism. and yeah, stuff like that. But everybody could benefit I'm, from being a little bit more philanthropic. 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 Yeah. You I'm guys, not arguing for like full on 
forced philanthropy. Yeah, it's just High if people awareness. realize they could do good with what they have, I'm not saying they're going to be required to. I think because that would be different. It being more in the spotlight that you can do a lot of great things. Like, don't take your money for granted. I can totally agree with you on that. Um, one thing that I was thinking about though. Yeah. <clears throat> A lot of these athletes are young and yeah, dumb. Yeah, that's true, too. And yep. it can be really appealing just to take that, like, fat stack that you got from winning the fucking Super Bowl Shit, listen, and buying a yacht. Have someone tell me I get $100 a million dollars tomorrow. <laughs> Bitch, y'all would never see me again. Fuck out of here. <laughs> yeah, so, like, so it, it seems that more of the older athletes are the yeah. ones that are taking on these, like, philanthropic views, which, I mean, they just guide out of their system because I don't doubt for a second that LeBron fucking – Yo, were you say not that turning up when they were younger. So this year, in the past two years, is the most LeBron has ever talked about social issues in his entire career. He's That's been in the NBA saying. for 16 years. He's been in the public eye for at least 20. That's what I'm saying. It's just something that comes with age. Which I mean, we should just better show that, like, this younger people, these newer generations of athletes, you can do more with your money. It doesn't only have to be about boats and hoes. You can get boats, hoes, and, <laughs> and build a school. <laughs> Which will get you more hoes. Oh, my God. <laughs> Name the school after your boat. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I think it, I think Caleb's hit a point where it, he's hit a good point in that uh, these athletes are our age. Yeah. Like, we could sit here all day and say this is what we do and this is how we do things. But at the end of the day, it's one of those things you don't know how you'd react until you get handed $100 million and say, oh, you're an adult. You can do whatever the fuck you want with this. Like, your mind can go to so many places and do all these things you never were able to do, especially coming from a place where the only thing you saw was some dude standing on the corner selling drugs and a dead body in an alley. Yeah. Like, you go from that to having the world at the top of your, in your hand, that's ridiculous. And it's and it's overnight like that. That's what I'm saying. So, like, you can't, like, at the same, I understand what Caleb's saying, the fact that you can't expect these athletes. So, I guess I should have worried it better than shitty people. It's... People being people. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But I like saying shitty people. These athletes can't like they like a rookie can't be expected to be like, hey, look out for black people. Like no, let him worry. It's it's okay to be selfish sometimes, but we need to also understand that you are now an influential person. Everything you do is under the public eye. Everything you do, these kids are going to watch you and mimic you. So you have to realize that as you're growing, I which is want, unfair, but it's reality. I just want to mention this because it's actually kind of funny because we're talking about younger people and how they're not always giving back and stuff like that. Yeah. So even though he might not do it for the right reasons, and it might just be to show off that he is trying to do something, Takashi 6 9 Oh, God. Jeez. So we've all seen the videos of him like handing out money. Yeah. Somebody photoshopped it and flipped the video, so it looks like he's <laughs> taking money from a bunch of poor kids. <laughs> oh, my God. oh, it reminds uh, me of like the God's Plan video for from Jane. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that video. It was wholesome. listen. Takashi's a dickhead. Yeah. I don't care. I don't yeah. like him. Before we, but he did. He did. That was a good thing that he did. Yeah. Like every, I hate this idea of like. You do something wrong in your life, and that's the only thing you remember. Hashtag Copernic. But like, what's the what's the thing? What's that saying you always say? You build a million bridges. Uh, you can build a million bridges, but if you suck one dick, you're not a bridge builder. You're a dick sucker. Exactly. That's just the way our society works, and it's unfortunate. And it sucks. Chris Brown's but... kind of making a comeback. I mean, this is. It sounds like left field, but he was known for a very long time that oh, this guy's music career is like fucking over. He yeah. beat Rihanna, yeah. but he's actually like now he's making... one of the most popular artists yeah. in the entire yeah, world. Yeah, he's back yeah. again, which I mean, it's good for him because he fucked up. I yeah. will never justify beating a woman. No. Unless she hits you first, in which case, equal lefts, equal rights, bitch, square up. But <laughs> that's not what we're going at. I'm saying um, he acknowledged she fucked up. He's making something of his life. He isn't just sitting on a bump on a log with all of his mountains of money that he already had. He's making more money, but also he's providing art. He's providing music. Yep. And that's giving back to society. Um, I know, like, this is where now you got me on this Chris Brown thing. Cause Sorry. Something. There was. Did you guys ever see the video of him explaining his side of what happened with Rihanna? No. I saw the video of someone rolling up to his house. No, like, someone him. interviewed him, and they, fi they finally took his side, and the world just decided to ignore it. What happened? This Bro, is not a shocker. Guys are guilty. Till proven she was wild and out. Like I'm not. I'm not here sitting here defending, saying he should have beat her ass. That's not yeah. what I'm saying. But like Caleb said, you gonna throw punches? Square the fuck up. Yeah. <clears throat> Bro, she was wilding out in his car. She grabbed. She literally grabbed. He said she grabbed his nuts and squeezed. Do you know how much restraint a man has to have? 
Look at Caleb's face. If y'all can see Caleb's face right now, that's how you know he's the next Chris Brown. That's him right there. That's the face he had. And I'm then, not a big guy. I Caleb, hit a I mean, Phil, you can understand this. She took his Lamborghini keys and tossed them into a yard. And he went out there to look for them. Only to find out she never threw the fucking keys. She just had them in the car. So he's just outside looking like a crazy person, looking for keys. And then he said that she was yelling out the window, help, he's trying to kill me. In a white neighborhood with oh. two young black people. Oh, no. She need to square the fuck up. No, 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 no. What the fuck is wrong with that bitch? Like, I hate, like, like, Hannah does this all the time. She always takes Rihanna's side. And I'm like, H, you got to listen to this. That's this America. Is not, this is not what you think it is. Bro. That's America for you, though. Bill Burr had an entire bit about how we should have listened to Chris Brown, and I get it now. Why? Just because, like, he, it was, he was using it as a way to say we always just take the women's side in society and oh. use them as a, an example. 2015 yeah. was horrible for any guy in a fraternity because everyone thought we were rapists. Yep. And shut campus uh, fraternities down. Yeah, like, for accusations that were later proven unfounded. I'm totally referring to uh, this uh, fucking look up uh, the <laughs> Greek life in the University of Virginia in 2015. It's this big thing. This girl said that she got gang raped by a fraternity. Then uh, it turns out that the guy she said gang raped her doesn't exist. The school didn't do research into whether or not this guy even attends their school. And they'd already decided to kick all Greek life off their campus. So um, also New York Times was the one. So we're like, ah, these guys, they rape girls. They, they gang rape girls. And everybody just instantly believed them. Because yep. a single girl said it against the word of all these Wait, returning men. I got this. Hashtag me too. Yeah. Bro. Oh. Hashtag me too. Um, to be fair, some of that was true in the, in the in the beginning, but then we got to Aziz on Sorry. We're all just looking at him like, what the bitch, you had a bad day. Shut up. <laughs> stop. George, stop. You cannot do that. Stop it. That's funny, but no. Bad. Sorry, Bad didn't mean to go on a fuck the system rant, but fuck the system. Yeah. And if you think that oh, girls can do no wrong and they're only fucking victims, you're a piece of shit and I hate you. I think that's like the unofficial classical urban slogan, it's fuck the system. It's, it's kind of gotten to the point where a lot of our podcasts come back to like, the system is broken. Yeah. <laughs> how about, have you tried turning talk- it off and turning it back on? Because <laughs> <like, laughs> <laughs> we've talked about gov- or government, we've talked talked about healthcare, even though that's kind of the same thing. We've mm. talked about schools. We've talked about sports, every sports, music, music, like <clears throat> video it's, games it's, never it's, fuck it's, up. It's... Just kidding. Gamergate. <laughs> 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 Sorry. <laughs> Stupid. Uh, yeah. There's bro. just like, there's a lot in our society that needs to be fixed. And a lot of it rests on the shoulders of the people who can afford to fix them, which is super dumb. Mm. But, and we're going to so yell at them until they fix it. Shut up. Class their podcast. They're probably never going to fix it, no, which is unfortunate. Not. It's easy to say things over the internet, but harder to do them in person. But that's also one of the things is like, yes, a lot of it is resting on the shoulders of the people who have the money because they can actually afford to do something about it. They yep. have a platform. But if you look at the population, the majority of people, if we use the government correctly, we can actually change it. Because we're the majority now. Uh-huh. You want to... Not how that works. Oh, that works. If we play the game the way everybody else wants to play the game. Phil. Well, Phil in, president. In the history of America, white people who run this country have hated everybody, including other white people. Yeah. And they have worked their damnedest <laughs> to destroy everybody else, even white people. So that's never going to happen. Like, I just sent Abby a... A meme, well, I guess it's sort of a meme, but a meme from today that said, was like, it was a black, it was Dave Chappelle when he was, like the movie where he was president, I don't remember what movie it was. It was Black Bush. Was it? Was yeah, it was, it was the was Black it? Bush skit from uh, the Chappelle show. Okay. Anyway, he was sitting, they were sitting in a conference room, you know, whatever the what, and there was like, the caption said, you guys always use your, what happened to your ancestors as an excuse, yada, 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 and he was like, my ancestors? Bitch, you mean my grandma? <laughs> like... What they like, happened 50 years ago. You posted yeah, about that. Yeah, like, no one understands, like, realizes our history is not that long. Hmm. Like, this country just turned 200 years old, like, or 300, no, yeah, yeah. just 200 years old in 1970 fucking six. Most of our parents were alive at that time. I'd like to think of America as fresh out of high school, just fucking everything up oh, right now. Oh, my God. And that, that might be what it is. We're in our college years where we just fuck up. You know, and we just got unfortunately just, placed in this timeline. We're just doing At that everything. point in time. But at the same time, 
everything like slavery was not that fucking long ago. No, it wasn't. It literally wasn't that long ago. It was less than 200 fucking years ago. Mm-hmm. Probably less than 150. That's fucking crazy. It's like four score and 20 years ago. No, I'm it's <laughs> unbelievable. But yet, you know, mm-hmm. racism just gone like that. America like, was just a happy accident. Everyone <laughs> will be equal when we give up our physical vessels and become digital. I vote Bob Ross for president. <laughs> yes. Bro, get out of here. We're, no, we're going to week it into Bernie's Bob Ross. He's just going to sit there and just we fucking just pur- purge. Purge the week. Yeah. Pur- purge the month. Purge the week. Caleb, you should watch the podcast uh, with Joe Rogan and Elon Musk. I think you'd fucking love it. <laughs> Are you talk? plugging another podcast on our podcast? Yes, or I or am. Good. Sponsor us, guys. <laughs> Donate yeah. to our Patreon. That's, that's the Joe podcast. Rogan podcast sponsors. Still like, haven't signed up. Just like a circle of podcasts that sponsor yeah. each other, but they never give each other money. They just like <laughs> shout each, each other, other out. out. <laughs> it's just like, all right, whatever. Maybe, that, maybe it's the, not a bad concept, yeah. though. It's not. Maybe we'll get sponsored by like Tesla or like the Boring Company. We're shouting out Elon Musk. Bro, getting sponsored by Tesla would be dope. I what won't we... be able to quit my full time job <laughs> as an engineer. <laughs> Wait, do we get to do we get to have Teslas if we get sponsored by them? Because that'd be dope. They can keep keep the Tesla. I want the flamethrower. Damn it! Oh my god, it's literally just. Like... We would all just get a keychain cable air coat. Brent, fuck. George, <laughs> he Brandon, was, he was trying to shoot down all of our dreams at once, and he just fuck, he couldn't even. Just, he was like, "All these guys are being idiots. Let me just correct them." <laughs> yeah, we get sponsored. We'd each get a T-shirt and a keychain that looked like a key fob, but it isn't a key fob. Yeah. I will have already quit my engineering job before I realize this. <laughs> guys, let me back in. I've made a grave mistake. My boss would be like, "Is that an Elon Musk shirt?" Yeah, you can have your job back. <laughs> Hell yeah, man! You think I can get one? <laughs> Nah, but you can have this keychain. Awesome. Ugh. Thanks. This touched Elon no, Musk. No, you tell him hand. you can have the car, flip him the keychain. He's like, yeah. So he goes outside. He's like hitting the button and nothing's <laughs> happening. <laughs> oh, man. Jesus. Ugh. Yeah, so that's kind of all that's happening in sports this week, even though we left that, you know, wrapping up the totality of the subject. Yeah. It's a classic urban podcast. we got to get off topic every once in a while. That's fair. Remember the religion podcast? Yeah. Right at the end, we just went haywire. Yeah. Let's make a religion about this. Let's not. <laughs> <laughs> we need to do uh, that again. That yeah. was... What, make a cult? Overthrow well, the too. government? That too. Dude, we could start the new Illuminati. The new Illuminati? <laughs> um, <laughs> no. Because all I can think of is like Paul Newman. <laughs> you know, I did a research paper in high school over the Illuminati. Did you really? Mm-hmm. They were a real organization. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so are the... Uh, Freemasons. Order of the Freemasons. Yep. Yeah, my... Don't say it, Caleb. <laughs> it was His daughter it is... Was uh... a... Hey, everybody, oh. if you join the Freemasons, you get pancakes and a sword. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think they're like... So, like, I, I, yeah. I low-key... Like, it might not be that way this like around this time, but the Masons were some secret society in the past. I fully believe it. I don't give a fuck what anyone says. Mm-hmm. Like, they, they were doing some sketchy shit. Maybe. I think that they were just the original f- original fraternity, and um, they stood no, no, for no, 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 a no, lot of really no, great no, things. No, no, they did some sketchy shit. They had. I to think look. they were the original labor union and all about brotherhood. No, they had to be. I bet they're the original assassins. No, hundred percent. They did shit like that, like some real like James yeah. Bond, like that hidden trials, like, and like just... spy secret shit. I'm telling you, I fully believe it. They did. Yeah. And I feel like they're still part of them are active, just at the very top of the. Have you guys yeah. like on a local level? They're not nearly as active as. No, no. But like that. the real ones, ooh, they still active. They the old out schools, there. The OGs. Ooh, mm-hmm. forty-seven is real. Oh gosh. I'm just I want to see. No, but on reality though, I f- I'm telling you, the Masons they up to something. Watch out, they gonna throw over. I bet they, I bet they infiltrated every part of society, and we just don't realize it. Yeah. That's why they accept members of all lives. That's why they're them. made. Huh. That's what they're made to do. Yeah. But I'm saying, like, not like in the way we think of it now. I'm saying, like, there are people in parts of, in every part of the government who answers to some higher being that's like the control Again, controller of that's the what they were created to do. That's the deep state, Brandon. Don't know about the deep state. This is, the, this is gross. I don't like this place anymore. I don't know what it means, though. Bro. But it's cool. Anyway. Oh. Do any of us know how to read that language? Longer than I've known. Oh, we have to figure out what that says. He's had it for longer than I've known, so oh. like. Oh God. <laughs> yeah. Oh! It's really cool. Anyway, um, do we want to talk about anything else? Or are we good for right now? 
I think we're good. I we have a, a raid lot. tonight. Can I plug the stream? All right, wonderful. Plug so, as you guys have known, we adopted that Tuesday, Thursday, Sunday streaming schedule where I stream at 8 o'clock to like 11 or however late I decided to stop my stream on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And then on Sunday, I kind of just stream whenever the heck I want to. You should just freaking, if you're following me, you get a notification when I go live. Follow me, like, and subscribe. Um, Spell out your name. That's Henry and Gryphos. E and I'm not done yet. Um, so uh, last week in the adventures of Henry and Co, um, we went into the first week of raiding for normal Uldir. Uh, it's the raid content for World of Warcraft out right now. Uh, we got all except for the very last boss killed. And we were going to go into this week without having killed that boss. And you know what I said? I said, fuck that. I made my own group with Blackjack and Hookers, and we killed the boss. There weren't blackjack or hookers, but we did kill the boss. It was so pretty I, great. I thought blackjack and hookers were the name of your teammates. That would have been Same. really cool. I Same. need to get like Same. I could see like a rogue being named like blackjack, blackjack. and then like no the paladin actually, named hookers. No, <laughs> both of them will be rogues. <laughs> uh, they're both stabby boys. Um, but yeah, got that clear. Going to be uh, raiding tonight. Um, hopefully, we'll be able to uh, knock out all uh, of normal Caleb, and get into heroic. This that's not how this works. What? Oh wait, this will be up tonight, won't it? Yeah, this is going to be up tonight. Oh, yeah, okay, you good. I was like, Caleb, that's not how YouTube works. <laughs> don't crush, <laughs> don't crush my dreams. Um, but, yeah, um, that's all I got. Catch me on the stream tonight. Uh, if you guys are, like, managed to watch the entirety of the stream and then get into me, I'll probably be an hour in. Um, outside of that, that's all we got. Thanks for tuning in. This has been another installment of Classically Urban with Henry and Gryphos. It's the Classical Urban Podcast, by the way. Oh, shit. You always leave the the out. You're just like, welcome to Classically Urban Podcast. Yeah. Oops. I don't, I'm just letting you know. You're done goofed. Well, thanks for tuning into the... Ca um, fuck. <laughs> whatever. Um, I'm hoping... This is, pertains to our podcast. I'm hoping that by um, sometime in November, which unfortunately is when this fucker gets married... Woot woot! Shouts outs to OG Philly G. He's gonna um, be OG. We will have the means oh. to finally record this bitch, <gasps> video wise. Hey! So oh, then that... they can see our ugly faces. Exactly. That would yeah, ruin yeah, the immersion. They think that we have these like crispy, <laughs> yeah. sexy voices, and they're gonna so, be like, "Holy shit!" Um, kind of to defeat the hindrance of people who want to see a video podcast. Oh, we'll be doing that here in a minute yeah. too. Quick so. thing, be like so many. Why dicks. is that? One of the first things my aunt said when she listened to the podcast, you have a very sexy voice, George. I'm like, what the fuck did you just say to me? <laughs> Your aunt's trying to go full fucking Greek on you, yeah. bro. Fuck that bitch. I think that's what full Greek Oh, no, that's the wrong thing I want to say in that <laughs> wow. situation. Damn. All right, well, thank you for listening to the Classically Urban Podcast. The it's your boy, Urban. Baby Ice Cube. I'm OG Philly G. And I'm George. And it's Henry and Gryphos. Get your dick wet. Peace out.